Welcome, in this video, I am going to show you how to download and install the Anaconda distribution of Python. Now, the reason that I made use of the Anaconda distribution uh, rather than installing Python uh, piecemeal along with its relevant libraries for data science is because Anaconda has very kindly um, and judiciously combined all the relevant libraries that you need uh, to perform most of your data science uh, task. And if you look at the website itself, it does actually go into a fair bit of details, uh, highlighting uh, the fact that it streamlines your workflow and uh, it connects your data to lots of data sources and also empower you. Now, what else? Um, what I would uh, encourage you to do is have a read through in details who make use of it. You can see quite a fair few companies do make use of this and they are reputable companies as well. The website also have a lot of useful information such as the blog, um, the white papers that they published. I encourage you to actually go and have a look uh, how to actually get started with GPU is one of them. Uh, they also publish white papers as well. A little bit and just to actually get you into the flow and the groove of what data science is about obviously to get you started and also how to actually move on to production and um, and also give you a state of development of what where data science is right now now the next step now is really to um, walk through a little bit about the website here uh, it tells you a little bit about what is anaconda so i've already introduced a little bit more uh, what you can do here is that if you look at this, uh, it tells you a couple of things that comes with this Anaconda distribution. You have Jupyter Notebook, you have Spider, uh, you have NumPy, you have SciPy, you have Number, Pandas, and on and on it goes. Uh, what are all of these? Uh, these are all different libraries that you can, in fact, make use of. And in fact, you do make use of a lot of them for your data science projects. Um, they all perform different roles and one of the beauty of these is that it does allow you to actually make use of R Studio should you decide that you prefer to make use of R at some point. Uh, other things is that uh, you know you have Jupyter, Jupyter Lab, Spider here. Now I'm not going into details of these different or various IDE or integrated uh, development uh, platform. Um, you can also make use of NumPy uh, and also SciPy. These are different so-called libraries that allows you to do computational tasks well, such as NumPy. Pandas help you to manage and manipulate tabular data. Me tabular data means your data comes in table format. SciPy contains a lot of scientific uh, calculations that you need for to perform scientific research and on and on it goes. Then Bokeh really is for visualization. You have Matplotlib also incorporated in there as well. And you have other things that is incorporated in here, which is for machine learning. You have Scikit-Learn. You have TensorFlow, which is for deep learning. Scikit-Learn is for machine learning. Theano, H2O, and there are many, many more. Now, what's important about this is that um, it actually bring all of these together and play nicely. Now, I don't know about you, I have tried installing these uh, previously individually and quite often each of these comes at the various uh, different so-called uh, dependencies and quite often these dependencies clashes with each other and Anaconda has nicely uh, bring all of these together, integrate together so that they don't conflict with each other. Um, there are quite a lot of Conda packages uh, to go with it, you have uh, some of these are for enterprise usage and some are cloud based. Now, Anaconda does come with a navigator. If you're not one of these people, um, or rather, I should say, if you're one of these people that grew up with Windows and you prefer a GUI, uh, graphic, graphic user, user interface like Windows, then you probably would like to start with Anaconda Navigator. The Anaconda Navigator. Pretty much gives you a window like this if you want to launch jupyter notebook you just click launch if you want the actual console you can click um, follow with that spider you can click launch as well and on and on it goes now the next thing is that 
you can also um, once you're done with this you can actually export it in a dot yml use okay this is very useful when you actually start to go into production mode now naturally there are a lot more information here there are the products there are the support communities um, and then a little bit more about the actual company itself and also other resources that you can make use of um, I'm going to go straight into two things. One is the download itself. You can either download via this button or you can download directly via this button. Let me just open that up in the background. Now, documentation is one part that you probably would want to revisit uh, quite frequently. It does actually provide uh, a lot of guides and how to actually make use of the different so-called programs that uh, Anaconda sponsor. And also it tells you a little bit more about the actual distribution itself and how to make use of it. Later on, as you download, there is the Anaconda cheat sheet that you may want to download. Um, I won't go into that here. The beauty of the cheat sheet is that it gets you started really quickly. So let's come back to the download portion here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to download Windows. You can, of course, download for Mac OS as well as Linux as well. Um, Notice the highlight of one of the key strengths of Anaconda, which is mentioned here, is that it you can easily install thousand plus data science packages uh, immediately. They already actually brought it all together for you. Okay, right. Coming back here, it also have a package management um, software that comes with it. It's called Conda. Now this Conda. Uh, package is a package manager it allows you to manage different packages together the dependencies and the environment so the conda comes with anaconda and uh, finally it is a portal to data science so let's start with python 3.6 now to download you only need to select this download okay so if you want to enter your email and get the starter guide uh, for now, I'm going to ignore that, but I strongly encourage you to download this uh, for your own reference. I'm familiar with this and also got a copy as well, so hence I'm not downloading things. Now, if you do come across some issues, you can, uh, like behind a firewall, uh, or you want to get Python 3.5 for other versions, uh, or how to install Anaconda, do make sure that you click on this link. It will lead you uh, to those relevant pages uh, to make use of. Now for further support, you can actually uh, ask for support and help here. And uh, what I want to do in this video now is to actually follow through on how to install Anaconda. So just click that. It will bring up this windows. You read through the actual setup. Uh, now they do recommend that you close all the other applications. So let's just click next. Now what we're installing is uh, Anaconda 3, um, not Anaconda 2, so because I want to focus on Python 3. Uh, do make sure that you read the EULA, the End User License Agreement. Uh, once you're happy with that, click Agree. So in this case, I'm going to just install just me. All right, so this is the recommended options. Now, you do actually, um, if you have the admin privileges, you might want to install all users. Okay, but for this portion, I'm just going to install just me uh, so that uh, you know, in case some of you actually just uh, leave it at that, I'm going to show you if the problem crops up, how we overcome them. Um, you can select where you like to install it to. Um, I'm going to just leave it at my users, Anthony, and the actual folder is called Anaconda 3. Okay. Now you get this question here, do you want to add Anaconda to my path variable? Uh, what is mentioned here is that it's not recommended. Uh, instead open Anaconda with Windows Start menu and select Anaconda 64-bit. Now this add to path option make Anaconda get found before previously installed software but may cause problems requiring it to un uninstall and reinstall Conda. Now I'm going to I'm going to just completely ignore this, okay? I'm not going to select this. Okay? The reason is that I just want to go to the lowest level uh then show you how to overcome problems should they actually come up. 
So the next thing to do is just click next and wait for the extraction and the installation itself. So I'm going to pause this video and when it's finished installing, I'll come back to it. Okay, finally, the installation is now complete. So let's just click next. Um, if you want to, you can select here to learn more about Anaconda Cloud. I'm going to leave uh, these two. Um, actually, I'm going to leave the support on just in case to uh, just let it pop up. So under anaconda.com support, if you actually want support, you can actually uh, refer to this uh, to get assistance. Uh, whether uh, be it virus or malware or other issues that you may come up with. So I'm just going to close this now. Okay, um, actually this one part that you might want to actually do pay attention to, you might want to subscribe to uh, support as well via this link here. So right, let's move on from there. Okay, now to test whether you actually have installed correctly or not, we come to the start button. Now, once you actually install, you should actually have Anaconda 3 64-bit, okay, new here. All right, and you should actually be able to see all of these different options available to you. I may have a bit more than you because I have slightly uh, a couple of different environments set up uh, that's actually available here for me. Uh, so hence, there's a little bit more. Now, these are all Python, okay, all Anaconda distribution of Python. Um, you can see that you have spider and you can actually reset these you can also have the Qt console you also have the notebook here you have ipython and finally you have the anaconda prompt and finally the uh, navigator and if you want to start the cloud you can do that as well now for most of you who are not familiar with anaconda you're most likely gonna uh, once you actually open up the anaconda 3 you're most likely gonna start with anaconda Navigator. So we're going to select that and let that uh, run and see how it goes. Right. So when you actually open up the Anaconda Navigator for the first time, this is what you should actually see. Uh, it may be slightly different depending on a few things. Um, what you see now here is that uh, you have the welcome screen. You just click OK and don't show again for now, I don't want to actually see that now. Uh, so let me walk you through the navigator. Uh, like I mentioned before, the navigator really is to guide you along. Um, or if you are more familiar with the GUI interface, uh, the Windows interface, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, you have the two specific software we're gonna use, or three really, is you have the notebook, the Jupyter notebook here. You have the spider and also orange three. Now, other things that to take note of is that you have the file. You can set your preference, restart or quit. You have also the online documentation and also you can set the environment. All right, we'll come to that a little later or in future videos. You have your project beta as well. You have, let me just close that. You can actually have some guidance. They do actually have video to teach you how to actually set up everything. Uh, the pandas, the documentation. So there are actually a lot of information that you can actually utilize here. And there's also the community. Uh, you have the Pi data, the uh, Anacon. Um, so yeah, th there are really a lot of uh, resources for you to make full use of. So let me come back to the home here. Now your applications, you can notice that there is a route here. You can actually set other channels uh, if you want to. Uh, you, what I have here, there are two options. You have the Anaconda uh, dot Conda RC or Anaconda uh, UDrive. Or the, sorry, this is the defaults. You can add if you want to, but for now, I think this is uh, we don't need to make use of that, at least uh, in what we are doing here. Right. Um, in this segment, I'm going to show you how to run two programs that's relevant for uh, what we want to do. Uh, I'm going to show you how do you run Spider. So in order to run Spider, all you have to do is actually click Launch. 
By the way, what does SPIDER stand for? It stands for Scientific Python Development Environment. Okay, so when once you click that, you should actually have this screen comes up and you have this allow Python to communicate on this network. Uh, I'll just allow access. Okay, now let me close that off. That's not relevant for our use. And there we go. You have Python running now. So let's just close this. That's basically how you actually run Spider. Now, how do I run Jupyter Notebook then? So you just click Launch. What exactly is a Jupyter Notebook? The Jupyter Notebook is basically a web-based and an interactive computing notebook environment. You can edit and run, you know, human-readable documents while describing the actual data analysis itself. Okay, and there you go. It's uh, it's come to the Jupyter. Now the next thing you need to do now is to actually create a new notebook. Alternatively, you may want to actually find one that you actually set up here um, and run that. So in in our case, to run, you just create a new, uh, unless you already have one whereby you can actually just, uh, you know, select that file and actually run it. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do this. So I'm just going to type Anthony ng2 and GitHub. All right, under Anthony, okay, you have Udemy, the complete machine learning course with Python. You can point to point your browser to this location. Now I have all of the relevant code for you to make use of. You just need to clone or download. Just download it as zip. Now there are other ways, but I think at least in our situation, this is sufficient for our use. Uh, that you can actually use git client if you're if you're familiar with what I'm talking about otherwise just use this straightforward method just click clone or download okay having done that you just open and the next thing to do is unzip this like so extract all and extract and there you have it Okay, all of the relevant files are already uh, been actually uh, deposited here. Okay, so uh, what we need to do next, if you look at this, is that we need to actually continue by moving to another location. Now, having uninstalled, or in download and unzip this, uh, what we want to do is copy this and move into the this to the directory that we were working in. The question now that you might have is what directory am I working in? Come back here uh, to home and you from here, it's difficult to tell what directory exactly this is. Now you can actually find that within your navigator itself. How you can tell is come to your root. Okay, so let me just cancel this. Come to your root, it says applications on root, click channels and this is actually where the files or the root directory of your applications which is c drive users anthony how do you get there all right you need to actually open up your file explorer okay and go to your c drive and then go to your users and go to in accordance to this okay c drive users anthony okay so that's really where my root directory is the next thing that you want to do is to actually copy this file here okay and unzip this extract all right here okay so we would have this we should have this 0204 where did it unzip to right there okay so it's actually here so let's come back to our file here all right this folder here you should be able to find the 0204, not the zip file. The 0204 should be here or right on top. Select that and you will actually see your IPython notebook, which denotes by IPYNB. PY stands for Python notebook. So in our case, if you want to open up this IPython notebook, just click that. And that's how you actually open the file itself. So that's really the process flow of how you would download from my GitHub, unzip it, 
copy and paste the whole thing onto your root directory or whatever directory that you're working in and then select that Python notebook, IPython notebook and there you have it. That's really how you run uh, a Jupyter notebook that downloaded from GitHub itself. Okay, that's really the portion that I want to show you how you actually run both Spider and also Jupyter Notebook.